Here is a very interesting question for you. We need to add this infinite series. The major problem is, can a grade 5 student solve this question? I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and posting excellent comments. Because of you, the channel has grown to this level and we are able to provide solutions to some very interesting questions. Here is another problem. We need to add the numbers which are half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 32 and so on. This series extends to infinity. You can always pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now here is the most important part of the video. I know this question is very simple for grade 11 students. However, think about a grade 5 student answering this question. What should be our approach so that we can make a grade 5 student understand the solution of this sum of infinite series. So that is the major objective of the video. So we'll discuss our approach for students at different levels. That's the key to it. So as you can see that this question can be solved or we can find the sum of infinite series using a simple formula which is known to a grade 11 student. Now we will see that this difficult question for grade 7 and a very challenging question for grade 5. How can we treat the solution so that the students in all the grades are able to understand the solution and apply the strategy when any situation like this appear. You get the idea. So that is the objective of the video. So let me get to the grade 11 solution first quickly and then we will get into our approach of finding solution for grade 7 or grade 8 and also grade 4 or 5 student. Is that okay? So for a grade 11 student, they know that this is an infinite geometric series which starts at half. Every other number in this particular series is half of the previous number. That is to say that the R value, the number which is the common ratio between the terms is half. So we can say that it is an infinite geometric sequence starting with a equals to half and each term after that is obtained by multiplying the previous term by r which is equal to half. Since the common ratio is less than 1, that is important, the series converges and its sum is given by the formula. Correct. So basically, for a geometric series, the sum can be found by the formula a times 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. Now, if the value of r is less than 1, in that case, for a very large value of n, in this case, it is approaching infinitely large, in that case, r to the power of n will approach 0, right? Half to the power of n will be approaching 0. And therefore, this particular formula, since r to the power of n is approaching 0, reduces to a times 1 over 1 minus r. Or I can write it as a divided by 1 minus r. Simple as that. Now, a is half for us in this series. 
and it is being multiplied by half. So I could substitute the values half divided by 1 minus half and that gives me half over half and the answer of 1. Now let us see how can we explain this solution to a middle school student or a junior school student. That is the main objective. Now in most of the competitions this question is not being asked for a grade 10 or 11 student. In Olympiad, you will find this question appearing for a junior school student, right? So, they need to understand these strategies to find solution for such questions. Now, let's look into one of our approach. The approach here is going to be, see, we have these numbers, half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 and so on. Well, some students in middle school might be even struggling to add the fractions. Forget about adding the whole series. You get the idea. So let's begin small steps, right? So we'll start with half. Well, half, if you add to it, it is just half, right? How about half plus 1 by 4? Well, we need to have a common denominator of 4. So in that case, we could write half as 2 over 4. And then we have 1 over 4. When you add them, you get 3 over 4. Perfect. Now let's try to add 3 terms. That is, we'll add half with 1 over 4 and 1 over 8. Well, the common denominator, which I can also write like this, 8. In that case, the terms will be, first term should be multiplied by 4. We'll get 4 here. And then the second term by 2. And here we have 1. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So we get 7 over 8 as the sum of 3 terms. Well, if I extend this, then what? I have half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16. And now the common denominator is 16. To make this 16, I have to multiply the first term by 8. So we'll have 8 here and this term by 4, and now by 2, and then by 1, and what do we get? 4 plus 8 is 12, 12 plus 2, 14, and 1, 15. So we get 15 over 16. Now what do you notice? Do you see a trend? We started with half, now it is 3 by 4, and then 7 over 8. The numerator is only 1 less than the denominator. That means 7 over 8 is very close to 1, right? 15 over 16 is even closer. That means almost 1, but not 1 16th, right? That means if I add these terms which are given to me as half plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 32, what should I get? Well, from the trend, I can easily write <coughs> this as 31 over 32, right? Because the numerator is just 1 less than the denominator. Do you see how close it is to 1? And therefore, if I extend this series, in that case, I should be approaching a value which is 1. And so, I should expect or rather estimate the sum of this series as 1. You get the idea, right? So that is how we are going to provide the solution, right? So here is a neatly written down solution for, for us. Let's review. What did we do? We started with half, then added 1 by 4. And then when we add 1 by 4 to half, we get 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth less than whole, correct? Now we add it. 1 by 8 also. Then the 3 terms add to 7 over 8. 7 over 8 is almost 1, but 1 eighth less. Now we added 4 terms, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16. The total now is 15 over 16, almost 1, but 1 16th less. And if we continue like this, we see that the value really approaches 1, right? So if I 
go ahead with the same trend, then adding 1 by 64 will give me 63 over 64, right? Do you see how close it is to 1? So easily, we can estimate this series to add to 1, correct? I hope you understand this part. Now the thing is, how will our junior school student understand this particular concept? So now let's look into the approach which we are going to adopt for our junior school student. Well, let me begin with a circle. So let's say this is the circle which we have drawn. And what are we talking about? We want to first begin with half of it, right? So let's take this circle. And the first number for us is half. So let me take half of the circle. Okay, now we want to add one fourth to it. One fourth is half of half, correct? So the remaining half, I'm making half of that, and that is one fourth. Perfect. And then one eighth is being added. To add one eighth, what can I do? I have this one fourth, I will do half of that, and add one by eight will now be added. You see that? So we are gradually adding each number one by one. And now adding one sixteenth really means that split this into two halves. And that becomes one over sixteen. And if I move further, one over thirty-two will mean that I have to split this further. And so we get what? One over thirty-two. Do you see how we have filled up the whole circle? We started with half, right? So we started with half. That is half for us. And now we added 1 by 4 to it. So we added 1 by 4 to it. And we filled up 3 fourths of the circle. And then we added further 1 eighth of it. And we further filled it up. Only 1 eighth is remaining to be filled. Then we again filled it up by 1 16th, half of 1 over 8. That means we are left with 1 16th only. And then finally, in this particular case, we also added 1 by 32. Now, if I go on adding like this, what will happen? We'll fill the whole circle. Do you see that? So that means this should be equal to one whole. You get the whole idea, right? So that is the approach which our junior school student will definitely understand. So here is a visual look of what we did. So we started with a circle, and in the circle, we filled half of it. So this is the half which we filled first. So we got this half of it. Let me just shade this up, right? Okay. So that is the half filled. And now we made half of half. Half of half is one fourth. And if we add them, we can kind of shade that also, correct? So you see, three fourth of the circle has been already shaded. Now half of one fourth is one over eight. And adding them up is kind of shading that also, right? So we have included one by eight also. So we have added the first three terms, half, 1 by 4, and 1 by 8. Do you see in this addition, we do not need to know how to add fractions also, but we can still solve the question. That is the idea. Now in this case, half of 1 by 8 is 1 by 16, which we are again going to add up. And so we are going to fill this circle further. And then... 1 by 32 will bring it closer to almost the full circle. And if I continue doing like this, I am going to fill the whole circle. And therefore, this is equal to one whole. You get the idea. So that is how we can show that this infinite series is just equal to one. So I hope you have understood the whole process. And with that, we come to the conclusion that the questions which we are looking at 
These questions can be asked at any level and we should be in a position to make our students understand their solutions at any level. That is the whole idea and that's the reason why my students are doing so well. I'm very happy to share with you this particular approach and I hope some of you will adopt it. Thanks for your time and if you like the approach, you can always subscribe to my videos and learn more. Thanks for your time and all the best.